about evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, a wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Terrible Legend of Crown Shield Castle. In the scullery of Crown Shield Castle, a desolate structure rising high on the river bluffs, a maid and butler talk in hushed tones as a blizzard rages in the wintry night outside. I tell you, there's terror in the night, Henry. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, you'd better see a good witch doctor, Bridget. The idea, a woman your age getting upset over that old crown shield fairy tale. Fairy tale, is it? If only it were true. But I've heard the hoofbeats in the night, Henry. A and I've seen the lightning. A uh, madman, strong as an ox, riding through the countryside, spreading terror. <laughs> a likely story. Uh, and what about the horse, Henry? The poor old lathered beast they found ridden to death last week. Or a runaway animal from a neighboring farm. So... And what about the night before last, when a hired hand was most beaten to death on a lonely road by a mysterious attacker? Uh, only unrelated incidents. No proof that old Crown Shield's ghost is abroad. Mark my words, Henry. It's time you dress for dinner, Bridget. Oh, I'm not going to take that dreaded trip into the night to the servants' quarters. Bridget. Oh, all well, right. I'm going. And your only danger is a touch of frostbite. Hurry now. Oh, I don't like going out into the night like this. I don't like it at all. Oh, it would be well if I was carried away to the world itself. Oh, the snow is blinding. I, I can scarcely see the quarters. What's that I'm hearing? Who's being part of the night? The man approaching on four steps. Second, all of you, let Henry tell us what happened. Oh, Bridget and I have been talking about the legend, Mr. Crownshield. She walked out the back door to change into her serving clothes. Yes, Henry. Oh, she just stepped outside when I heard the sound of hoofbeats. She called, and I ran out, and <laughs> found her here in the snow like this. Henry, we're so sorry. The sound of hoofbeats. Well, her, her neck's been snapped like a, like a matchstick. Oh, it's fantastic. It's the legend. It's that rotten legend come to pass. Old Crown Shield's back from his grave to spread terror through the countryside, just like Bridget said. Henry. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What else take life of a kindly, innocent woman like this? Yes, and who else would have the strength to murder someone that way? Sheila? Yes, Father. Brad and I will help Henry. You go inside and notify Dr. Cummings. Yes, Father, right away. And be sure you tell no one else about this. You understand? No one... If this snowstorm gets much worse, Margo, we'll need radar to find the Crown Shield estate. I must say, your telephone friend didn't take a very considerate time to pry us away from that holiday party. Yeah, don't worry, darling, we're almost there. If all hadn't come from an old servant of Dad's, I wouldn't have been such an easy mark. Well, I still think you gave it an awfully high priority. A1 priority, Margot. Henry said his wife, Bridget, had been murdered. Murdered? Yes. By a phantom who rides through the night. Oh, Lamar. That's what he said. 
Something about a legend coming to pass. Your father's former servant couldn't be slightly touched in the head, could he? On the contrary, darling. Henry sounded very convincing over the phone. Alarmingly so. Well, it's all beginning to sound a little frightening. Who are these Crownshills, anyway? An old and wealthy family living in what's practically a castle. There's the old man and his two grown children, Bradley the son, and Sheila the young daughter. Oh. Oh, here's the driveway. Isn't exactly bursting at the seams with gaiety, is it? Well, the castles are supposed to have a grim background, darling. Apparently, this one has reason to be foreboding. Mr. Cranston, sir. Well, very good to see you again. Hello, Henry. Glad to see you. Uh, this is Miss Lane. Oh, how do you do, Miss Lane? Hello, Henry. I was sorry to hear the bad news. Any new developments since you called? Oh, n- nothing since I telephoned, sir. Who's that, Henry? Oh, it's Mr. Lamont Cranston, sir. The gentleman I spoke about. You're Bradley Crownshield, I presume. That's right, Mr. Cranston. Uh, this is Miss Lane. Huh? We were attending a nearby holiday party when we got Henry's call. Miss Lane? How do you do, Mr. Crownshield? Hey, frankly, Mr. Cranston, I hadn't anticipated calling in a private investigator. I see. Oh, Henry took it upon himself to phone you without our knowledge. Well, I'm begging your pardon, Mr. Bradley, but I thought you might not want the authorities in on this right now. So? So I called Mr. Cranston, sir. With his background of criminology, I'm sure he can help us with the mystery of Bridget's death. If you'd rather we go, Mr. Cranston, I... No, 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 no. As long as you're here, I guess maybe you'd better stay. Come on, let's go in the living room. That fireplace looks wonderful. I'm nearly frozen. Miss Lane, Mr. Cranston, that's my sister, Sheila. How do you do? How do you, How do, you do? do? I'm so glad you've come. I'm really afraid to spend another night here at the castle without some outside help. Oh, what makes you think Mr. Cranston is going to spend the night here, Sheila? Oh, this is my father. Miss Lane, Mr. Do? Cranston, Mr. Cranston, whom you seem to recognize. I told you distinctly not to tell anyone else about this unfortunate incident. Father, please. Come on. I think maybe we better go. No, no, please. Bradley, please ask them to spend at least the night. Well, uh, why don't we call in a crystal grazer, too? <laughs> he might be able to give you a schedule of the night rider's next appearance. Hmm. If you'll pardon me, I'm going to bed. Good night. If we'd realized Henry's call was going to create so much friction. Oh, no, please, please don't mind Father and Mr. Cranston. He isn't well. Make them stay, please, Bradley. Well... Suppose if you'd feel better, Sheila. If we can be of any help to you and Henry in clearing up this mystery, we'll be glad to stay. Won't we, Margaret? Of course. Thank you very much. All right. Now, Henry will show you to your rooms, and then I suppose we'd better discuss this whole business in detail. This isn't exactly my idea of model behavior for the unexpected guest snooping around the house after everybody else has retired. I have much choice, darling. Little family talk about the whole business didn't get us very far. Mm -hmm. Family seems convinced the legend has come to pass, all right. Yes. Let's see, there's a library here at the end of the hall. Better make that our first objective. The door is closed. I hope they haven't locked it. I don't think they mistrust us that much. Let's see. No, they don't. Come on in, darling. Still enough fire going among those embers to light the room. There's quite enough. Mm, seems one of the crown shields did some late reading. Left a book on the table. Let's have a look. Oh, and it's a family album. Yes, just the very thing we're looking for, Margot. Hmm? The history of the legend. But some important parts seem to have been cut out. What? Well, it's fantastic. Read this, Lamont. Old Joseph Crownshield was taken into custody pending a sanity hearing. During the night, by superhuman strength, he bent the bars of the jail sufficiently to permit his escape. He was seen several times after that galloping about the countryside on a foaming horse. And several violent deaths afterwards were attributed to his fearful strength. Lamont, look. The fireplace. Fragments of paper still burning. Yes. Well, it looks like part of a photograph. Maybe we can salvage part of it. Yeah, I've got it. What is it, Lamont? Oh. What is it? Tell you in a minute, Margot. Right now, I think we'd better get upstairs and fast. Oh. 
I wish you'd stop being so mysterious, Mr. Cranston. Whose photograph was that you pulled out of the fire? Well, I'm wrong about this, Margaret, but it looks right now as if maybe the legend has come to pass. And if we don't hurry, it may come again. Legend come to pass? What? Where are we going now? At least you can tell me that. Right down here to the end of the hallway. What are those stairs at the end of the hall? They lead up to the tower room where Henry sleeps on. Oh, Lord. Sounds like Henry's voice. Come on. The stairs here to the tower room. Henry's voice, all right. Someone's trying to kill me, Mark, just the way Bridget was murdered. Uh, here's the room. Come on, I'll break it down. Hurry, Lamar, before it's too late. It's killing, here goes. Henry! He fell from that window. What was thrown? But who could have done it? The room's empty. Who, oh, Lamar? Listen. struck twice in the gloomy shadows of Crown Shield Castle as apparently a terrible legend has become a reality. Right now, Margot and Lamont are staring at the high tower window from which Henry the butler has just been hurled. What a terrible way to die. Terrible and terrifying. There is no reason to take Henry's life. The more kind and loyal servant never lived. It's just sheer unreasoned violence. You know, you aren't suggesting that the legend... Yes, Margot. A legend has come to pass. Are you saying that a ghost, the phantom of old Joseph Crown Shield, has come back from the dead to spread death and destruction? No ghost, Margot. A very real, very live person. The photograph that someone tried so hard to destroy was of the present Joseph Crown Shield. Oh? And Margot, he's an exact image of his ancestor from those wild gray eyes to the immense physique. No. Yes. Come on, darling, downstairs. Going to see our host in person if he's to be seen. But I still don't see. If it is Mr. Cronshire, how did he just vanish into thin air? The tower room was empty when we broke in. I was wondering about that myself. Oh. That's funny. What? There, the door to the Crownshield bedroom is open. Oh, wait a second. The door has been ripped off its hinges. And I'll be inside bent double. Crown Shield must have been locked in. By either Brad or Shield. In a fit of rage, he ripped open the door and escaped. Margo, I've got to find Crown Shield. Yes, but where? How? I don't know, Margo. But I think the shadow can locate him. Fine. Oh, Brad. Oh. What are you doing out here in the stable farm? Well, I... I might ask you the same thing, Bradley. I was in my room when I heard a cry and I ran out. I found Henry under the tower window. He's dead, Father. Henry? Dead? Why, who could have done this? That's what I'd like to know, Father. The legend. It's come to pass. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, what do you mean? Where have you been within the last 15 minutes? Uh, right here in the stable. I came here several hours ago to, to go over some things in the storeroom up in the Father. lodge. And I... Hey, yes, Brad. Your footprints running from the house to the stable are still very clear in the snow. Here, look, look. Why, uh, so they are. You've been outside, Father, riding. That's very obvious from your appearance. No. There's a riding crop in your hand, still flecked with foam. Why oh, don't you realize that I've known all along that something like this was happening? Uh, what are you saying, Brad? This legend isn't a myth or a, or a phantom riding through the night. It's you. No, no, Brad, no. I didn't strangle Henry. I, I, I swear I didn't. Oh, there's been a sickness of the mind in this family for generations. It... It's just fallen to you, that's all, Father. Brad. Yes? You, you've got to help me. Of course, Father. You will help me, won't you, Brad? Don't, don't stare at me like that. You've got to help me, Brad. You've got to. I will, Father. Brad, come here. Come, Father. No, don't. Stay away. Stay away. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Who's that? <laughs> Who laughed? Who's in this room? This is the shadow. Shadow? Yes, Sheila. Shadow is right here beside you, though you cannot see him. Well, what do you want with me? Information, Sheila. Information? Where are your father and brother? Shadow has searched the castle. Where were they at the time of Henry's death? Henry's death? Where were they? I, I, I don't know. Believe me, I don't. But you do know things about this legend that you haven't told, uh, don't you, Sheila? Well... Don't you? Yes. Yes, but they're only fear, Shadow. Only suspicion. You fear that these violent deaths are not caused by a legend? <laughs> You suspect your father's inherited your family's insanity, that it's he who's killing during bits of violent rage. Yes. Yes, it's terrible. I know, I know, but it's true. I, I saw him a few moments after Bridget's death. His coat was covered with snow. His eyes were wild. Shadow, you, you've got to keep him from committing any more insane murders. You've got to. The Shadow will see that the guilty pay for their crimes. <laughs> Oh, Brad, you frightened me. I thought for a moment that... What's the matter, Brad? You look as if you've seen a ghost. I've seen Father. Oh. He's been riding, Sheila. Still have a riding crop in his hand. Riding? Yes, he said he'd been in the stable for the last couple of hours, but you could see his footprints clearly in the snow. Oh, Brad. He looked so wild, Sheila. I, I got excited and said that he was sick in the mind, and then he started toward me. I broke away from him came up here. We'll have to tell Mr. Cranston right away, Brad. We've got to get Father put away before he starts for one of us. Well, you, you suspected it all along, haven't you, Sheila? Yes. Ever since he said he started feeling badly, it must have been coming over him then. Yeah. My poor dad, he's like a man in a dream. I really think he knows what he's doing. Of course not. When I accused him of Henry's murder, he was almost pathetic. He, he kept saying that... But I didn't strangle him. I didn't... What's the matter, Brett? Strange. What's strange? Well, they said I didn't strangle Henry. Yes? Henry wasn't strangled. I saw him. His back was broken. He, he couldn't have screamed that way if he'd been strangled. No, that's right. He couldn't have. Why did Father say that, then? Don't you know, Brad? No. Oh. Very simple. Father didn't murder Henry. He didn't? No. Because he's not the mad one in this family. I am... <laughs> Mr. Crown should have been out there in the stable the mark. We saw his riding crop and what looked like his footprint. Yes, Baldwin, I'm equally sure he's back here in the castle now. Sheila was positive that it was her father who was responsible for the murder. So she told the shadow. That's his room right there, isn't it? Yes. Easy now, darling. We don't know what we'll find. Door is still swinging on those broken hinges. Now get behind me, Margo. I don't imagine he's in there, but we can't afford to take a chance. <laughs> It doesn't look as if he's been back since he ripped. Good Lord, Brad. The man, his neck. Yes. Broken by that same enormous violent strength. You can still see the finger marks. That's funny. What, Lamont? I wonder. Margot, you've got to get to someplace safe, fast. Shadow has a job to do. The cellar, that's it? Cellar? Yes, there's a heavy metal door, no windows. You'll be safe there. No the time to lose now, Margot. Come on. Come on, back so soon. Let me in, please, let me in. What? Sounds like Sheila. She must be in trouble, isn't she? Just a minute, Sheila, I'm coming. She 
Oh, Miss Lane, thank you for opening the door. I came down here to be safe. I guess that's the same reason you're here. Yes, it is. It isn't very cheery down here with only this one candle. Just so long as no one can get it. That's, that's the main thing. Yes, of course. This must have been a terrible ordeal for you, Sheila. Yes, it's been pretty much of a strain. This Bridget and then Henry and then... Oh, you... You do know about your brother, of course. Yes, I know. Father, is he really, really is. I mean, you would help me put him away. I see. That's why I've been taking care of Father so carefully lately. Giving him his medicine regularly. Sheila, please, you're getting yourself upset. Upset? <laughs> You'd be surprised at how upset I can really get, Miss Lane. Sheila. I can get so upset sometimes that I think I have to get rid of everyone who discovers my secret. Sheila, stay away from me. And I will, too, if I have to. I'll kill all of you. And they'll say my father did it. They'll scream murder at him when he stands behind the bars of the asylum. Sheila, please. But I'll be safe. Nobody will know about me because none of you will talk. Get away. It's no use trying to get behind that wine cask, Miss Lane. I'm strong. Very strong. No, Miss Lane. No. My wrist. Who's holding my wrist? Let go of that girl's throat. Oh, I... oh. That's better, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila, you're back. Yes, Sheila. Back to accuse you of being the terrible legend of Crown Shield Castle. No, it's my father. He's the one. No, it's you who inherited the powerful madness. <laughs> when you found the insanity coming over you, you tried to shift the blame to your father. Physically, but not mentally, the exact image of old Joseph Crown Shield. No, that's a lie. It's the truth, Sheila. <laughs> The shadow has seen your father. I know you gave him drugs disguised as medicine, kept him locked in the stable when you wanted him out of the way. All right, Shadow, I did kill them all. But you'll never hold me for those murders. I'm going out this door. It's locked. The shadow has the key. I'll tear it off its hinges. Not that door, Sheila. Then I'll beat the walls. Then I'll beat them with my bare fist. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. No, Sheila. <laughs> You're not going out. Ever again. From now on, you'll stay inside for the rest of your life. And when you found Mr. Crownshill locked in the stable, you knew the whole story. That's right, Margot. Apparently, Sheila first killed Bridget in an insane fit of rage. Later, Henry stumbled down the truth, and he had to go, too. But Sheila wasn't there when we broke into the room, Lamar. She slipped out through a secret door in the tall room just as we came in. We were so concerned with Henry, and it was dark, we didn't even notice. Oh. When did you first guess the truth, Lamar? When I saw the marks on Brad's throat. Old man Crownshill has huge hands. These marks were made by a very powerful, but very small hand. I see. Well, I'm glad it's over. I hope the next mysterious phone call you get will be from a subway station. I never want to see a castle again. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> 